welcome and praise the Lord. My name is Sister Judy Gruber, and I bring you love all the way from the nation's capital, 3641 Georgia Avenue, Northwest, Washington, D.C. I want to bring you love from our pastor, Bishop Elijah Solomon, and from the matriarch, Mother Nanny Gruber, and the entire Fisherman of Inn Church family. We are so glad, so glad that you decided to be with us on this Sunday morning. And while we wait for others, we would love for you to participate. Be an evangelist and go ahead and hit share so others can be a part of this morning worship experience. And while we wait just a little bit longer, put your name and where you're from. Again, we are so glad that you decided to be with the Fisherman Men Church family on this Sunday morning. And let's go higher in the Lord. We love you. Well, good morning. We are so grateful that you've taken time out of your busy schedule to come and fellowship with the Fisherman Men Church in a virtual environment on this Sunday morning. And we thank God that he's been good to you all week long. And we trust that you will continue to enjoy a powerful move of God throughout this virtual experience this morning. I'm before you, amen, to read a scripture. And then after this, shortly after the scripture, we will go into a word of prayer in the name of the Lord. So if you have your Bibles on this morning and you have, amen, your electronic devices, we would ask at this time that if you would turn with me to the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Once again, the 29th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, and we will read two verses, verses, amen, 10 and 11. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. The Lord has prepared an expected end for you and I. Only thing that we have to do is be faithful, amen, and with God in the place that God has us right now, because he's got a great expected end for you and me. At this time, you're going to see a small screen come up before you that you can type your prayer request in. Please type your prayer request in. This is the reason why the Fisherman of Men Church is a praying church. Monday through Friday at the 6 a.m. hour until 6.30 a.m., we are in intercessory prayer, praying for those that have a need. We also have prayer services on Friday nights from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. All of these services are virtually happening on Zoom, but God can move in a virtual environment. All he has to do is two or three people that are gathered together in my name. There will I be in the midst of them also. So I ought to ask at this time, please type your prayer request in. And now... We are going before the Lord in a word of prayer. So bow your heads with me in the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. Lord, we praise you for your grace and we honor you for your mercy on today. Lord, if it had not been on, if it had not been for you on our side, we don't know where we would be. But it's because of the grace that you bestowed upon each and every one of us, Lord, that you allowed us to be in a worship service on a Sunday morning, Jesus. We thank you on today for food on our table and clothes on our back, Jesus. We thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding, Jesus. But the God, those that have had enough faith to put their prayer requests into the chat screen below, Lord, we would ask right now that you would give them the very desires of their hearts, Jesus. We would ask that you would perform a miracle in their lives right now, Jesus. We would ask the God for the fresh anointing to be poured out, the God, in everybody lives that has joined us in this worship experience on this morning. And don't stop there. Breathe upon the man of God as he brings forth the word, Jesus. Let a rich anointing flow from glory, the God, down into the vessel that you will use on this morning, Jesus. Unto the words of the man of God, Jesus. Be anointed, the God. 
with grace and seasoned with mercy and that it comes from above Jesus and that when your word is sown it may bring about a change in our lives Jesus it may lift some burdens Jesus your word may destroy some yokes your word may loose some shackles in the name of Jesus Christ Lord that your word will pull down all the strongholds Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ Lord hallelujah breathe upon oh God everybody Family that is on this, hallelujah, and in this virtual church experience this morning. Have your way, Jesus, and we will glorify you, and we will praise your name forevermore. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, we thank God for you once again, and trust and believe that whatever you've asked God to do, he's going to do it. And we thank you once again for joining us in worship in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and continue, amen, to enjoy this worship experience on this morning. And may heaven smile upon you, grace and peace.
My name is Sister Ife Payne, and welcome to Fisherman and Men Church Broadcast, where brotherly love is more than just a motto. We are so happy that you chose to spend this moment with us today, and we hope that you get something special out of today's message. Please join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as we stream from www fishermanamenchurch.org. You can also listen to our podcast every Sunday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at www.myspiritdc.com. We would love for you to support the ministry by participating in weekly giving. There are four ways to give. You can mail it to Fisherman Amen Church. P.O. Box 43333, Washington, D.C. 20010, via Cash App, dollar sign FOM 3641. Also, you can go to our website, www.fishermanamanchurch.org, or you can just text to give 301. 709-7233. Put your time in. Hey, man, coming after a while. Put your time in. to Jesus who is the head of our life and we praise God for my husband, my late husband, the honorary apostle. Great honor. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Put his time in. I know. I know he was gonna put his time in. <laughs> Praise God for his goodness. Praise Lord for our presider, our presider Clark, to our uh, pastor who's Bishop Dr. Solomon, who's you know, helping us, the fishermen and men church, and to all the missionaries and elders and deacons and saints and everybody. It's just a great opportunity to be here in the land of the living, feeling good, feeling pretty good in my body, singing that song, hallelujah. I want to leave that with you. And as you go through the week, you know, question yourself. Ask yourself the question, uh, am I putting my time in? Because God is soon to come. And the world is going on a fast pace, acting like they don't know what is going on. They may not know what's going on. But today, I don't have a whole lot of things that I want to say. But remember time. And then question yourself. Am I putting my time in? Because I want to see the Lord payday. Everybody who's working, so many people don't have a job. But everybody that is working, they look for that payday. And that's what we want to do. Put Get our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Put our time in. This is real. You know, stop picking flowers. Don't look around. But you look at your soul. And I'm doing what I have to do to make it in. And Jesus, well, I tell you, it's going to be a great day. That's why we got to talk about this. So I hope you enjoyed this song but to background pull out the old one today, but it's so real in Jesus' name. Look to see you next.
Praise the Lord. We thank God for allowing us to come before you again today. Amen. And give a word of inspiration, word of encouragement. Amen. As the Lord has given it unto us. He has blessed us. We are moving forward in the year of 2022. And God has been good to us. I thank God for those that have contracted, survived, and still given God's name the glory and the praise throughout this coronavirus season. This too, as the word of the Lord declares us, this too shall pass. So as we prepare to go before the Lord in prayer, as we prepare to deliver the word of God, we thank God for all of his blessings in our lives. I do want to ask that we remember in prayer our very own matriarch, amen, Mother Nettie Groover. Let's continue to uplift her in prayer as she goes through the ailments of life, amen, and God has given her strength. We want to continue to uphold her and lift her up. Pray, pray for those that are taking care of her, caretakers, doctors, nurses, her very own daughter, Judy. Let's pray and ask God to give them all strength. God is good. His mercy is everlasting, and I thank God because Isaiah promised us with his stripes, we are healed. I want us to remember in prayer, Vivian Rome. Amen. The doctors have said there's nothing else we can do. But how many know God is in control? Amen. He knows how to heal. He knows how to heal permanently. He knows how to comfort. He knows how to just give us what is right in our lives. Let us pray for Miriam, Lois. Amen. And our senior saints, our senior citizens, they're 80 and 90 years old. God has been good to them and has left them in our presence that we may be inspired to hold to God's unchanging hand as they have done throughout the ages. I want to offer a special prayer for our students, those that are still out on summer vacation, that God will bless and keep them safe and sound from all hurt, harm and danger. Finally, I want to invite you to join us virtually as we continue in this uh, virtual environment on social media. But I'm looking forward to the end of August. We are rapidly approaching the reopening of the Sanctuary of the Fishermen of Men at 3641 Georgia Avenue. And I want you to look for all of the advertisements, the social media announcements. Amen. Look forward to joining us the end of August at a grand reopening of the Fishermen of Men Church facility that we can come together and worship him as the Bible has declared that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Oh, yes, we've been assembling over the past years or two, amen, on virtual media, but there's nothing like seeing the faces and the amens and the testimonies of the people of God. So look for all of the advertisement, amen, headed toward the end of August 2022. Would you lift your hands, lift your heads, lift your eyes toward the hills from which cometh thy strength as we go before the Lord in prayer. Lord God, eternal and everlasting provider of our every need, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. We ask now, Lord, that you remember every name that was called before you, even the unspoken names, Lord, that are on the hearts, minds, and lips of your people, those that are listening to us on social media, Lord, they have special requests. They call upon you, incline your ear unto us, and grant us your will. Give us, Lord, the power to accept the will of God, knowing that you will not allow any more to come upon us than we're able to bear. Bless those that are hospitalized, incarcerated. Lord, even those that have fallen away from the grace of God, bring them back before it's too late. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. 
Amen and amen. I have a wonderful word that God has given me today, and it is called, or the title would be, I Wish Somebody Would Catch on Fire. Hallelujah. Thank God, for I do wish somebody, everybody, anybody, would just catch on fire. As I was growing up in the church, I'd always hear people saying, you know, let somebody else do it. When you ask people to take on various responsibilities, they will always say, well, I'm, I'm just not prepared for that. Let somebody else fulfill that position. I prayed and asked God, please send that family to my church, my congregation. That family is called Mr. and Mrs. Somebody, because I know then they will do everything that needs to be done. Unfortunately, I've never met that person yet, name somebody. So let's pray and ask God that someone will catch on fire. Everyone that's called by the name of Jesus Christ will catch on fire. We do not need lukewarm, cold spirits, amen, when we are serving God, because we serve a God that's always on fire for us. My text scripture today will come from Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse number 1 in the King James Version, the word of the Lord says, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it filled with the Holy Ghost, and be, they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. In the English Standard Version of this particular chapter in the Bible, chapter 2, verse number 3, the Bible says, And divided tongues as of fire appeared unto them and rested on each of them. That's what I'm asking God for in this day and time for the fire of the Holy Spirit to rest upon each and every one of us. I'm telling you, fire makes you move. Fire will make you jump. Fire will make you do stuff that you thought you could never do. But the word of the Lord says when Pentecost finally came, when the day that God had promised through Jesus Christ that he was going to send his comforter into our lives, it came like fire. It came as a rushing mighty wind. How many today can say, I want to feel the fire of God? What is fire? Fire is a combustion or a burning in which substance combined chemically with oxygen from the air and typically gives out a bright light, heat, or smoke. I want to know, does your countenance give out a bright light because you're on fire for the Lord? I want to know if you don't have that fire? Do you want that fire? All of us should want to be hot and worship God. Fire will make you tell somebody. Like the prophet said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but I couldn't keep it to myself. Can you keep the word of the Lord to yourself? Can you keep the redemption from sin and degradation and all of those negative things to yourself? Or can you just go tell somebody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? I refuse not to stay hot for the Lord. I'm telling you, spiritually, we need to make sure that we are a person that has a face or facial expression that draws heat. It lets people know that I'm excited about serving God. I'm excited about what I'm doing, working for the Lord. Oh, I know my works are not what's going to get me in heaven, but the Bible lets me know that we need faith along with works. And faith will say, I'm going to stay hot for the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 19, the word of the Lord said, for God is a consuming fire. That tells me if God is in me, he will burn up anything that's not like him. He will give me the strength, the power, and the authority to control my emotions, to control my tongue, to control my ears, my heart, my everything about me. God says he's a consuming fire. Fire burns anything that's not solid, 
and cannot stand the heat. Can you today stand the heat of God's fire in your life? Are you willing to say, all to thee I surrender, and all to thee I freely give? If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, I implore you, I invite you to turn your life over to Jesus. I don't care what your condition is. I don't care what you're addicted to. I don't care how far you've fallen. The fire of God can consume it and take it out of your life. That's what Hebrews said. God is a consuming fire. So whatever is contrary to the will and to the word of God, if you turn it over to Jesus, He'll work it out. Luke says it this way in chapter 3, verse number 16 in the English Standard Version of the Bible. John answered and said unto him, I'm not worthy to baptize you in water, but one that is coming after me is mightier than I. And I, I, I'm not even count myself worthy to just put him down in the water we gave of baptism. But he concludes that verse by saying he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Do I have someone today that can type in the comments or just can lift your voice and say with me, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit of God and I have a fire that the devil cannot quench. I have a burning desire to live for the Lord, to serve God in the beauty of holiness. David said in Psalms 104, he makes his messengers win. Let me say that again. God makes his messengers win. God's messengers are his disciples. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Wind blows. Wind touches whatever it crosses. If you step outside and the wind is blowing, you will feel it blowing across you. You would feel it and say, oh, thank God for a cool wind on a hot day. So let's be disciples. Let's fulfill the scripture that says we are his messengers. We are his talmuds. We are his disciples. And we are the wind that will take the word of God to a dying, to a dying world. It not only says we are his messengers as winds, but we are his ministers. We are a flaming fire. Now, ministry here does not mean a title. Ministry means it's people that will speak the word of God, will tell the world that I found a savior and he's sweet I know. Somebody please join me, join the fishermen of men, those that are faithful and committed to God, and let's be a flame in fire. I wish somebody would catch on fire. This message today is to ignite you to go out and burn for the Lord. The Bible tells me in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 1, when Solomon finished building the temple, Solomon prayed. And when Solomon prayed, the word says, fire came down from heaven and consumed all of the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And what happened? The glory of the Lord filled the temple. Now tie that back that says God is a consuming fire. If we would just pray and ask God to Fill us again. Refresh us again. Lord, burn up anything in my life that's not like you. I want you to fill my temple with your fire. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, let us learn that the fire of God uh, will burn up whatever lust desires that cross within your mind. You've got to yield your members unto the hand of God. Jeremiah, he said it like this. Is it not my word like fire? I want you to say to yourself today, when you speak, when you testify, when you tell people about the goodness of the Lord, is it like fire? Does it declare the Lord? And like a hammer, it breaks the rocks, the hard minds. It breaks the souls of those that refuse to hear the word of God. They ought to be able to look at your life without you talking. They ought to be able to look at your walk without you just strutting around, showing out. Uh, they ought to be able to say there's something about her. There's something about them. And when they ask you what it is, you should say it's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let somebody catch on fire today. Let's burn. 
Let's let the world see us burn. I went to a, a conference in Los Angeles, California once by the late uh, Bishop Mac Murray. And in that conference, he said, every time I step into my pulpit, I want God to set me on fire so that people will come just to see me burn. Oh, I wish that all of us could burn so much that the world will come to see us burn. No one can lay a foundation other than that which was laid by Jesus Christ. We can't create the church. We can't recreate the church. All we have to do now is build on the foundation that Jesus Christ laid. We need to build on that foundation like Christ did. In that book, he says in 1 Corinthians that uh, because the fire will be revealed. The fire will test what sort of works each one of us has done. How many want us to say, Lord, when it comes, let my work withstand the fire. Now, that tells me that so many people are working. They're working from the pulpit to the back door. They're working servant, but their heart is not in it. Your work will stand only what you do for the Lord, not to be seen and heard of men. God wants some people that will catch on fire in this 21st century. We're living in a time where politics are corrupt. Judicial systems are not working for us. Guns are flowing freely. Bullets are flying in the streets. Drugs have infiltrated from, amen, the executive office down to the elementary school. We are living in a time that the people of God need to catch on fire. Everybody is marching. Everybody is coming out of the closet. Everybody is hollering for a cause. Where are the people of God on fire and letting the world know that God is still in control? We need to catch on fire again, people of God. We need to stand up and let the world see us burning down within our soul for the will and the word because God is soon to come. I don't want to see anyone lost that has not heard has not been given the opportunity to surrender and submit their bodies, submit their souls and their hearts so that God can reign on that throne. I don't know God could be speaking to someone today. He happened to allow you to listen to this broadcast and God is talking directly to you saying you need to catch on fire. You need to let the Holy Spirit Burn within your soul. Backslider, come back to Christ. Those that have become weak, come back to Christ. I wish that somebody would catch on fire. We need the power of God. Your works, they are important, but the fire needs to be in it. He says that when the fire comes, you won't suffer loss, but your soul will be saved. How many want to receive crowns of righteousness, crowns of joy, and hear him say, well done. You fought a good fight. You finished the course, and you did it with fire. I feel like the fire of God is burning in this day and age, and we need to let ourselves catch on fire. I looked in the book of Revelation, and almost every one of the 22 chapters in that book, not all, but they have some mention, some reference to the fire. I'm telling you, God is a consuming fire and he will keep us if we keep our minds stayed on him. I want to finish up this thing. There's a song that says, the windows of heaven are open. <clears throat> the fire is falling tonight. There is joy, joy, Joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. Listen to the words. I gave up my old filthy garment and he gave me a robe of pure wine. Now I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. Well, the windows of heaven are open. And the fire is falling tonight. There is joy, joy, joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. If you just catch on fire, you'll be able to sing that song with the conviction in your heart. 
when the windows of heaven open and the fire of the Holy Spirit fall, you will be able to say there's joy, joy, joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. God bless you. I must go. But I want you to remember, look for the advertisement. Look for the flyers. Look for the communication. Well, praise the Lord again. We trust that you've enjoyed the worship service today and that you've truly heard a word from the Lord. Now, this is a point in the service that all of us can participate in. It's giving time. It's offering time when we sacrifice a portion of that which God has given unto us back unto him in the name of the Lord. And at the Fisherman Amen Church, there's four ways to give. First of all, you can give by mailing your offerings to Fisherman Amen Church, P.O. Box 4333, Washington, D.C. 20010. Also, we have a cash app, which is dollar sign FOM3641. We also have a website you can log on to, fishermanamenchurch.org. Also, we have something for our millennials as well. For You can do text to give at 301-709-7233. God always says in his word, he says it's more blessed to give than to receive. He also says that him that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully in the name of the Lord. Now we want to bless that offering that you've already given in the name of the Lord. We want to ask God to bless you for your sacrifice. Also, we want to pray also that God's word that was brought forth on today, that it may bring about a change in your life and in the lives of your family members and anything that you try to accomplish in life, that God would be with you in the name of the Lord. So bow your heads with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this opportunity. We praise you for this privilege, Lord, to even give a portion of that which you've given unto us back unto you. Lord, we ask all those that have sold the seed into this ministry on today that you would bless the seed, Jesus. That, Lord God, you will return back unto Tim, Lord God, tenfold, twentyfold, thirtyfold, even a hundredfold. And that you would use this offering for the upholding of thy kingdom and let it meet the needs of this church and much more. Lord, we also stand before you on today that we would pray that this word that was sown on this morning, that it was ble a blessing unto somebody. That, Lord God, the word was sown upon good ground, that it may bring forth some fruit in somebody's life, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. Once again, we thank God for you joining us in worship this morning. We thank God for the seed that you sown. We trust and believe that you would have a good week. May heaven smile upon you. Grace and peace. We hope that you heard something today that is going to maintain you throughout the week. And we hope that the word will resonate with you for the rest of your life. If you desire prayer or want to be baptized in Jesus' name, please call us at 202-723-2216. You can also email us at info at fishermanamanchurch.org. We would love for you to actually connect with us through social media. So you can definitely also see us on Instagram and Facebook.